Thanks for joining us today. My name is Alicia, and I'm a part of the new editorial board of Synthesis Workshop. For today's Research Spotlight episode, we're joined by Marlena Fottle from the Carrera Group at ETH Zurich. Marlena received her Bachelor's of Science in Chemistry and Biochemistry from Ludwig Maximilian University of Munich, followed by her Master's of Science in Chemistry from ETH Zurich. She is currently pursuing her PhD at ETH Zurich under the supervision of Eric Carrera, where her work focuses on complex molecule total synthesis. I'll now turn it over to Marlena. Welcome, and thanks again for joining us. Thank you, Alicia, for the kind introduction. I'm excited to present our research on synthesis workshop today, and now we talk a little about the recently completed total synthesis of the natural product pedrolite. Let me start by giving a short introduction about this natural product. Pedrolite was isolated in 2021 from Euphorbia pedroi, which is a spurge endemic to Portugal. It is a tiglin related diterpenoid and features a highly caged pentacyclic carbon skeleton with an embedded bicyclo 2 to 1 heptane. Biosynthetically, pedrolite is proposed to derive from a tiglin precursor through B ring contraction and rearrangement. As this scaffold was unprecedented at the time of isolation, it was assigned the name pedrolane, joining other well known scaffolds such as tiglane, ingenane, and daphnane. In general, Tiglanes have a long history of use in pharmacological studies due to their broad range of biological activities, and especially forbol esters have played an important role in cancer research due to their significant tumor-promoting effect. In addition, Tiglanes generally feature highly oxidized complex skeletons, which render them popular targets for total synthesis studies. Our retrosynthetic strategy focused on Pedrolite's highly congested bicyclo 2 to 1 heptane core. In this regard, tracing the alpha methyl ketone in the target back to the corresponding olefin revealed the full retron of an intramolecular Diels-Aldo reaction for late stage construction of the bicyclo 2 to 1 heptene from a 5 substituted cyclopentadiene. This connection of the delta lactone and functional group manipulation on a suitable side chain led to a tertiary alcohol which would in turn be obtained from a decorated cyclopropyl ketone through 1,2 addition. While this retrosynthesis was straightforward on paper, literature research quickly revealed a major issue in its implementation, namely the 5-substituted cyclopentadiene. It became clear that the main challenge was how to manage the cyclopentadiene from the 1,2 addition to the actual intramolecular Diels-Aldo reaction late in the synthesis. In fact, Five substituted cyclopentadienes are rather fleeting entities for more than one reason. They readily undergo sigmatropic 1,5 hydrogen shifts, resulting in fast isomerization to the thermodynamically more stable 2 and 3 isomers at room temperature, and thus forming equilibrium isomer mixtures. In our case, this would not only mean loss of the desired substitution pattern upon the 1,2 addition, but also that we would likely have a mixture of species complicating analysis by NMR spectroscopy and characterization during a major part of our synthesis. Secondly, depending on the substitution, cyclopentadienes have a high tendency to dimerization. This would potentially lead to unwanted reactivity or issues with the isolation and storage of the cyclopentadiene intermediates. In general, the impression we obtained from extensive literature research was that the five cyclopentadiene adducts we envisioned in our retrosynthetic strategy were not suitable intermediates in the multi-step synthetic sequence required for the construction of the lactone ring. For this reason, we were prompted to search for an alternative that would serve as a stable entity of several steps and be unmasked to produce the highly reactive five substituted cyclopentadiene at a predetermined stage late in the synthesis. This surrogate, or mask cyclopentadiene, would have to fulfill at least three criteria. First, it would have to be, in some form, a competent nucleophile for addition to the ketone. Second, the resulting adult would need to be stable over a number of steps. And third, the desired 5-cyclopentadiene would have to be released in situ at a specific stage and under preferably mild conditions for intramolecular cycloaddition. For this purpose, we considered a vast number of potential candidates. Conventional ways of generating dienes in situ include cycloreversion and elimination. However, 
literature research once again revealed that most of the potential surrogates we could think of were actually unstable or likely unstable in that they were not reported to exist at all, such as the ones shown in red on the left side of the slide. Eventually, we were particularly attracted to seven substituted norbonadine. The lithiated species was known and had been reported to be a competent nucleophile for 1-2 addition in one instance. The resulting adduct would seemingly be stable to a variety of synthetic conditions and, additionally, recent reports suggested mild ways of unmasking the cyclopentadiene in situ. More specifically, in 2015, Dustin and co-workers showed that two 3 disubstituted norbonadines undergo inverse electron demand this alder cycloaddition with 1,2,4,5-tetrazines and, following a sequence of reactions, the corresponding cyclopentadienes are generated in situ and can be trapped with dimethyl acetylene dicarboxylate. This study is more a proof of concept, and although the reaction has for example been used in polymer chemistry, it has not found application in a setting of complex molecule synthesis. Thus, we opted for the norbonadine as our cyclopentadiene surrogate, as it not only fulfilled the mentioned requirements best, but also gave us the opportunity to explore the potential of the tetrazine chemistry in the context of total synthesis for the first time. The synthesis of pedrolite commenced with the large-scale preparation of a literature-known chiral enone acetal in excellent enantioselectivity. For this purpose, commercial power methoxyphenol was converted to the quinone acetal with bisacetoxyadobenzene and subsequently desymmetrized by methyl 1,4 addition using the chiral phosphoramidate ligand shown in the box according to the method reported by Feringa and co-workers. With this chiral building block in hand, the alpha ketone position was further hydroxylated under rubotum oxidation conditions via the silyl enol ether. The oxidation had to be performed in one pot, as the enol ether was not isolable due to spontaneous aromatization. Next, Grignard 1-2 addition of isopropanyl magnesium bromide furnished the C12-C13 diol which partially hydrolyzed upon workup, delivering the corresponding enone as a separable mixture of diastereomers in 5 to 1 dr in favor of the desired product after complete ketali protection under mildly acidic conditions. We speculate that the addition proceeds under direction by the unprotected vicinal hydroxy group, conveniently installing the C12-C13 anti-diol motif commonly found in tigliane diterpenoids. Standard silyl alkyl protection furnished the test diether, which was subjected to hydrogen atom transfer conditions, resulting in intramolecular conjugate addition to furnish the cyclopropyl ketone in excellent yield. So far, the described synthesis route gives convenient access to pedrolite's highly functionalized chiral fragment in a concise and enantioselective fashion. With the decorated cyclopropyl ketone in hand, we next focused on the sidechain installation via aldol addition. Unfortunately, attempts at direct deprotonation of the ketone with LHMDS or LDA followed by aldehyde addition resulted in isolation of the desired product in only 20-30% yield with concomitant formation of a large amount of unidentified side products. Therefore, the ketone was converted to its silyl enol ether. The crude enol ether was then treated with methyl lithium to generate the enolate in situ, followed by the aldehyde, followed by TMS triflate, to give the aldol adduct as the alcohol and the silyl ether in 78% combined yield over two steps. Although we were not able to obtain full conversion of the aldol product to its silyl ether under these conditions, the in situ protection was nevertheless desirable as the composition of the unprotected alcohol was observed on several occasions during workup, purification, or drying of the purified product under high vacuum. Isolated alcohol adduct was also protected using standard silylation conditions. With the sidechain in place, the stage was now set for the introduction of the pivotal norbonadienyl group via ketone addition. In the 1980s, Klump reported the convenient generation of 7 lithium norbonadiene from 7 chloronorbonadiene by use of lithium DBB and trapping of the anion with electrophiles such as CO2 and DMF. In 2003, Sutton and co workers reported the 1 2 addition of 7 lithium norbonadiene to transoc 2 enal in the course of a prostaglandin synthesis, wherein the adduct was subjected to oxidative cleavage to afford a tri substituted cyclopentene. Although the norbonadiene lithium is thus well documented as a stable and competent nucleophile, 
The aldehyde addition reported by Sutton is, to the best of our knowledge, the only example of such a carbonyl addition. And no addition to ketones or more densely functionalized substrates is known. Thus, as we embarked in the 1-2 addition, we were naturally worried about the hindered nature of our substrate and the two potentially epimerizable sites alpha to the ketone. All the more we were pleased to observe that the addition of semilithium norbonadine occurred cleanly to give the desired tertiary alcohol a single diastereomer in 81% yield. With the norbonadinyl adduct in hand, we proceeded with the construction of the delta lactone. Selective deprotection of the TMS and the TBS groups delivered the trial intermediate. Gratifyingly, upon exposure to catalytic tampon excess oxidant, the primary alcohol selectively underwent oxidation and spontaneous cyclization with the tertiary alcohol to give the corresponding lactone, which further oxidized, furnishing the desired lactone in one single step. Finally, dehydration of the alcohol furnished the enoate as the key cyclization precursor. With the enoate in hand, we were now able to focus on the Kedias alder reaction cascade to access the natural products by cycloheptane core. The proposed mechanism for the reaction of the seven substituted norbonadine with tetrazines to give the desired bicycloheptine is shown on this slide. First, the tetrazine undergoes inverse electron demand tilt alder reaction with one of the double bonds in a norbonadine to give the tetraasa bicyclooctadiene adduct. Next, retrodyl alder reaction leads to nitrogen extrusion, delivering the dihydropyridazine adduct, which in turn undergoes retrodyl alder reaction to release the 5-substituted cyclopentadiene in situ. Finally, intramolecular dyl alder reaction can now take place to furnish the desired product. Although we were pleased to observe formation of the desired bicycloheptine during initial attempts at the dyl alder reaction cascade, the yield was typically low due to a range of undesired reactivity depending on the tetrazine substitution. With seemingly moderately electron-deficient tetrazines, such as the dipyridyl tetrazine, the cycloaddition was observed to be sluggish, while the nitrogen extrusion and fragmentation occurred readily. Following the intramolecular dils alder reaction, the product itself was able to undergo cycloaddition with unconsumed tetrazine to give the corresponding adducts after nitrogen extrusion and tautomerization. Thus, the competitive reaction of the tetrazine with both the starting material and the product would result in complex reaction mixtures with high side product ratios and low product yields. On the other hand, electron deficient tetrazines, such as the bismethoxycarbonyl tetrazine, were observed to react readily with the starting material, and in some cases, tetrazine consumption was complete within seconds. However, after the inverse electron demand dils alder retro dils alder reaction sequence, the adducts failed to fragment and only tautomerization took place to give the corresponding 1,4 diene intermediates. Even upon prolonged heating, no fragmentation was observed, but only unspecific decomposition. Finally, when comparably electron rich tetrazines were employed, such as the dimethyl tetrazine, no reaction was observed at all. In light of these observations, we initially thought the key step optimization would boil down to finding a sweet spot in terms of tetrazine substitution. Thus, ideally, the first cycloaddition would occur readily and most of the tetrazine in the reaction mixture would be consumed by the starting material before the efficient intermediate fragmentation would take place to give the desired bicycloheptine in high yields after intramolecular dils alder reaction. To this end, we synthesized and purchased several 3,6 substituted tetrazines and investigated their reactivity in the dils alder reaction cascade. Unfortunately, none of the tetrazines gave the result we had hoped for, and we eventually turned our attention to the dipyridyl tetrazine, which was the one that, despite significant overreaction, gave the best product yield. Then, to harness the full potential of the dils alder reaction cascade, we focused on the exploration of substoichiometric tetrazine use with the aim of free isolating unreacted starting material. On this slide, you can clearly see how the ratio of product and free isolated starting material is significantly improved over side product formation when half the equivalents of tetrazine are used. In addition, 
extensive optimization was performed with regard to solvents, additives and temperature. While polar solvents, for example DMF and methanol, resulted in a better ratio of starting material product and side products compared to the initial condition with chloroform, less polar solvents, such as toluene, performed worse. Lewis acid additives did not improve the reaction, and even mild Lewis acids, such as zinc chloride, were incompatible with the tetrazine leading to its decomposition. Decreasing the reaction temperature from room temperature to 10 degrees proved favorable for the reaction outcome. We assume that lower temperatures contribute to the stabilization of the reaction intermediates before fragmentation, allowing for increased tetrazine consumption by the starting material. Indeed, under these conditions, we were actually able to observe such unfragmented species in the NMR spectra of the reaction mixtures before they were converted to the product upon standing at room temperature. Finally, we were able to identify optimized reaction conditions which provided the desired bicycloheptene in 56% yield with 34% reisolated starting material. These included performing the reaction at 0 degrees for 6 days, followed by addition of excess norbonadine and a 36-hour period of stirring at room temperature to quench unreacted tetrazine and allow for complete intermediate fragmentation. With the desired bicycloheptene in hand, we focus on the completion of the synthesis of pedralite. Diastereoselective oxidation of the double bond delivered the corresponding epoxide. Treatment of the epoxide with lithium dimethyl cuprate gave the secondary alcohol as a single rigid isomer. We suggest that the attack by the cuprate onto the alternative side of the epoxide is prevented by 1,3-dioxyl-methyl-methyl interaction. Alcohol oxidation, followed by global alcohol deprotection, furnished a diol, which differed from the target natural product only by the acylation pattern. Finally, sequential acylation with first isobutyric chloride, followed by benzoic hydride, completed the total synthesis delivering pedrolite. In summary, we have accomplished the first total synthesis of the natural product pedrolite. To this end, we developed a novel and efficient sequence for construction of the target's highly functionalized carrying fragment in an enantioselective fashion. This sequence comprised a quinone acetal desymmetrization, a diastereoselective isopropanyl Grignard addition onto an alpha hydroxy ketone, and a hapt initiated cyclopropanation. The natural product's bicycloheptane core was constructed via a complex diels alder reaction cascade of an enoate bearing a 7 norbonadine which was unmasked by use of tetrazines to give the corresponding 5-cyclopentadiene in situ for intramolecular cycloaddition. Overall, our strategy not only contributes to streamlining tigliane and tigliane-derived natural product synthesis by rapid assembly of the commonly found carin motif, but it also introduces norbonadiene as a cyclopentadiene surrogate for complex molecule total synthesis. Thereby, it helps expanding the scope of the dils alder reaction for highly congested and synthetically challenging structures not accessible through more conventional strategies. With this, I would like to thank Professor Carrera and the whole Carrera group for making this project possible, as well as ETH Zurich and the SNSF for funding. Thank you, Alicia, for hosting me, and thanks to all for watching. Thank you to Marlena for the spotlight on the synthesis of pedrolide. If you would like to learn more, please visit the Carrera Group's recent publication in JAX. If you enjoyed this episode and would like to support our podcast, please consider subscribing to us on YouTube or following us on Twitter. Thanks again for joining us, and we hope to see you next time.